Shalom dear listeners and watchers on YouTube. We are continuing to study the parables of Yeshua and stressing on the Jewish background of these parables. One of the big parables of Yeshua is a parable about ten maidens uh, that were waiting for the bridegroom. And like all the other parables of Yeshua, we need to put this parable back into the first century context, into the Jewish context of the words of Yeshua, because Yeshua wasn't the Presbyterian, wasn't a Baptist, wasn't a Pentecostal, he was a Jew. So were all the other apostles, and we need to look at the New Testament as a Jewish book from the first century and, and try to understand it from within its background. All right, this parable, I'm going to read it from Matthew 25, from verse 1 to verse 13. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels and their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out and meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough oil for us. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went to meet him and went with him to the wedding. And the doors were shut. Afterward, those virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore. For you know neither the day nor the hour which the Son of Man is coming. Very interesting parable. It's a parable about wise and foolish. The New Testament is actually giving us several times stories and parables about the wise and the foolish. And uh, this is one of them. But in order to understand it, we have to understand that there are many, many, many rabbinical stories contemporary and right near the time of Yeshua uh, that also deal with the wise and the foolish. I want to read from you from the Babylonian tractate from page 61b. Uh, another parable about the wise and the foolish that is a rabbinical parable that you can see actually a, a context that is a bit different than the setting in which we are reading in the New Testament but also dealing with the wise and the foolish. Thou shalt love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your might. It has been taught by Rabbi Eliezer saying, If it says with all your soul, why should it say with all your might? If it says with all your might, why should it say with all your soul? Should there be a man who values his life more than his soul, more than his money? For it says, with all your soul. And should there be a man who values his money more than his life? For it says, with all your might. Might is translated here or understood by the rabbis as the money, the possessions, the, 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 the financial value of the person himself. Rabbi Akiva, with all thy soul. Our rabbis taught once there was a wicked government issued a decree forbidding Jews from studying the practice of the Torah. Papus Ben Yehuda came and found Rabbi Akiva publicly bringing, gathering together and occupying himself with the Torah. He said to him, Akiva, are you not afraid of the government? We're talking about the Roman government here. He replied, I will explain to you with a parable. A fox was once walking along the riverside and he saw fish going in swarms from place to place in the river. 
He said to them, what are you fleeing from? They replied, we are fleeing those who cast nets to catch us. He said to them, would you like to come up on the dry land so that you can live together with me and with my ancestors who lived uh, together with your ancestors? They replied, are you the one that they call the clever of the animals? The fox is considered the clever of the animals. Are you the one that they call the cleverest of all the animals? Are you not clever? You are foolish. If we are afraid in the elements in which we are already used to living, how much more in the elements in which we would die? So it is with us. If such is our condition that we sit and study the Torah, which is written for us, and it's life-giving for our days, if we neglect how much worse off we shall be. It is related about Rabbi Akiva that he was arrested and thrown into prison. And Papos ben Yehuda was arrested and thrown into the same prison. And he said to him, Papos ben Yehuda, happy are you Akiva that you have been seized and put in prison by busying yourself with the Torah. And Rabbi Akiva replied to him that before he was executed actually that it was accepted for the kingdom of heaven to be better to be executed for studying the Torah than for mishandling money because this Papas Ben Yehuda was a, a notorious character. So we see in this comparison of the two parables that there is wise and foolish parables dealing with Torah. And it is interesting that when we examine the Jewish literature of the first century that oil is considered Torah. So when we consider the parable of Yeshua about the kingdom of heaven and the ten virgins, he is not talking about literal lamps and oil. He's talking about those people who are waiting for the background. He's talking about those people who are waiting for the bridegroom with Torah extra Torah in their packages waiting for the Messiah to come then those people who only do whatever is absolutely necessary and don't think that they should be prepared for the worst and hope for the best. Those ten virgins, five of them were prepared for the best, were not prepared for the worst, they were not prepared for the delay of the bridegroom. We are now talking about Torah the oil is the Torah and these five had only what was absolutely necessary for them, hoping for the best. The other five were prepared for the worst, like the wise man who built his house on the rock in the end of the Sermon of the Mountain. He was prepared for the worst. Of course, we all hope for the best, but we don't know. Maybe the worst will come and we've got to be prepared for the worst. That's what this parable is about. The kingdom of heaven is teaching us here to be prepared for the worst and always hope for the best. Until the next time.